In the North Country, fall is one of the best times of the year to fish for walleyes, both for numbers and size. Savvy anglers greedily ply the cooling waters for the last open water fish of the season. Then, winter casts her crystal sheen over the waves, and the party's over. Or is it? For the walleyes and other game fish, the only difference between late fall and early winter is a few inches of ice on the ceiling. Virtually nothing has changed. The fish are often in the same locations, feeding voraciously. In fact, as soon as five inches of safely treadable ice is formed, the walleyes are even more catchable. They've had no pressure for a couple of weeks. Let's join professional walleye trail executive director Jim Kalkovan, along with ice fishing experts Jeff and Mike Shannon on Big Stone Lake, straddling the Minnesota-South Dakota border for some early ice action. Got one. Give me a hand here. It's pulling pretty good. Oh. Here he is. He's coming up. Oh, oh. There, it's okay, okay. Oh. Hey, hey. There you go, Jim. Nice fish. Folks, we're here with Mike and Jeff Shannon on Big Stone Lake today. Yeah, Jim, today we're going to talk about fishing these fish out in the basin here on uh, this lake where the average depth is about 10 feet, 8 to 10 feet deep. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to go out and search for these basin fish. Oh, he's hooked pretty good. Good hooks in. Big Stone Lake is a relatively featureless basin, averaging 11 feet in depth. It's two miles wide and 26 miles long. As with any large flat or expansive structural element, finding fish can appear at first glance to be a bit intimidating. A call to the local bait shop or sporting goods store can give you an idea of which part of the lake is producing the most fish. The Shannons will begin their search for walleyes in the one-third of the lake closest to the dam, still a huge chunk of water. Holes are punched in 200-yard increments while searching for eyes. In this case, locators usually will not reveal the presence of fish immediately because in 12 feet of water, the cone of the transducer will only cover a couple of feet of the bottom. So, the Shannons will spend a few minutes jigging in each hole, looking at the locator for fish to reveal themselves. The presence of fish indicates that others will be nearby and more holes will be drilled in the vicinity to zero in on the best concentration of walleyes. These schools of fish are meandering nomads. To follow them, punch holes in 100-yard increments like spokes from the hub of the last concentration of walleyes. Over a period of time doing this, it's possible to gauge the direction that the eyes are moving and even to establish a daily pattern. It's a common sense approach that applies whether fishing dishpan prairie lakes, big basins of the Great Lakes, or even huge mud flats on bodies of water like Lake Mille Lacs in Minnesota or Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin. Another hint the Shannon brothers offer, when you have ice that is patchy, clear in some spots and cloudy in others, or you find patches of snow on the otherwise new ice, fish just inside the cloudy or snowy edges, the Shannons believe that the walleyes use the shadows to lurk in while intercepting bait fish, and you'll be less visible if you fish behind the shield the snow affords. In this case, the walleyes are only three yards or so under our feet. We like to use uh, spoons here on these basin lakes, you know, on the prairies here. Uh, they have a lot of flash and action. They have that flutter as they flutter down to the bottom that uh, simulates a crippled minnow. And uh, we always tip it with the minnow head, of course. And we try to get them right down next to the bottom, within the bottom six inches, six to four inches, and then sometimes bring them up. Uh, sometimes we raise them up a little bit higher, and uh, we use different colors, starting off with your basic uh, chartreuse and then orange, and sometimes me metallic colors, silver and gold. Uh, that seems to be a pretty good pattern here. By staying intelligently mobile, it's possible to track down fish that are rolling, and the action you encounter can really get your blood pumping. A cool day seems to warm right up. Ho, 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 ho. It's Christmas time. Merry Christmas. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not holding the line. Oh, I see that. Boy, he really ooh, was good ooh. fish. Good fish. Look at that rod tip. I just want to keep it in the center of the hole so, good. so we don't get a hook on the edge of the, edge of the hole. 
when he, he comes, when he gets his head up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to. I can keep the line in the center of the hole. I can keep the hook from catching. These aren't real big holes. Oh, I get up there. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> there he is. That's good fish. This rod is a rod that I built that's kind of light just for this type of fish. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh! <laughs> Jim! This is a decent fish. There he is. He's right there. Okay. Ah, hey. What do you think about there you go. <laughs> there you go. Boy, this is a, a nice fish and with the principles we've learned today, I think a lot of people are gonna be amazed at what they can catch in these flats and these big basins like we've been fishing. Yeah, it's a pattern that's been uh, working for us for a long time and uh, we sure enjoy fishing it here. Here's another example. Thanks, hey, for, hey, thanks for landing my fish. Way to go, <laughs> wow.